Well, it's 2023, let's go over what we've done to the Brumby. So we've got our EJ conversion, our adapter plate. We had to modify our radiator. That's all pretty much new still. We had a EFI fuel pump for a VL turbo that was rated to like a thousand horsepower. And it pumped that much fuel that actually swelled up our old fuel filter and it looked like a balloon. So we replaced that and changed our fuel pump to one that's actually decent for this engine. We've also had to modify our pitch mount. So we've made up a mount for this engine. I needed bushes that day. So we got some sway bar link pin bushes and I just cut them in half and then run them on each side. We replaced our engine mounts in the engine bay because the engine was rocking over and touching our CV shaft, cutting all our boots off. And that's why we went through so many CVs this year. I think we're up to four or five on that one side. We've also got our Red Arc Smart Solenoid here. This is for the shittest dual battery system in the world. Pretty much all it is, is it's earth to the body and then it's just got six mil wire that was already in the car and I just joined both sides together. So it's 12 mil now. And then we can't start or anything off it, but all that battery does is just run my Ingle fridge. R31 Skyline bumper that we had to cut about 150 mil out of the center to make it fit on the Brumby. Still just got the original R31 lights. I made a little bash plate up so when we hit shit in the middle, it doesn't knock the bar off. It is starting to crack on the sides. That's from when we first put it on. I hit a wash out in the beach and it just shattered it straight away. So that's it's there. And then when we come back from Birdsville, it broke all the mounts off it. So it was just rattling. Like we're also still waiting on a headlight spring that I ordered from a bloke on Facebook. And I think he just scammed me $10. So that was like three months ago and we still do not have a headlight spring. So we had to get a new side indicator because I broke that one with a bull bar. That was $45 from the wreckers. $45. I put these shit flares on it because the coppers molested me and said they were going to defect it if I didn't. As you can see, our flares fit perfectly. And if you look in here, they're higher than the guards, so I just painted the body black so you couldn't really notice it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which they will be getting fixed very shortly. I'm going to do a wide body for it. So, right, right. Yeah, I will. One day. <laughs> so as everyone should know by now, we're called Anchor Engineering for a reason. We got some lower ball joints, they were global ones. They did not fit in this thing at all. So I cracked a wobbly and just wired the lower control arm to the knuckle. And then we moved. So six months later, my little sister was driving it out in the paddock <laughs> and the lower control arm fell off. <laughs> and the wheel came up and smashed the shit out of the guard. So that's why we've got a mad dent there now. And now it's got different ball joints in it that actually fit. So we fixed that issue. So we have our roof rack here, these are pro racks. These are just on clearance at Repco. Um, they just clamp around this bit of chrome trim here. They're about a foot too long, so you just got to trim them, but they fit on there all right. They sit extremely high, so I went to Bunnings and got this aluminium pool fence and just tech screwed it to the bottom of it to try and make it look like it sat lower. And I thought if we break something, we could just sit it up there. But that holds my spare tyre because it doesn't fit anywhere. And that's just a Kumo 27-inch Muddy. It's different to the rest of the tyres because I've got shitty numnangs on it. And I'm too poor to buy a full set yet. So now I've got our camp's tourner cover here. It's a really nice tourner cover. They can cheap too for what they are. Only issue is, is it doesn't line up with any of the holes I've already got in the tub. So that's kind of annoying. So then we have our back of our Brumby. So we've got our 35 litre Ingle fridge. Ingle's shit on Waco's. Waco's are trash. We've got a million spare parts. I've got everything, fuel line, hoses, knuckles. I've got stub axles and so we don't have to run CVs. I've got a pair of CVs at minimum. Um, we've got our dual battery just here in the back. That will eventually go underneath the car when I make up a thing. And this is pretty much all we took when we went on Birdsville minus the swag. So we've got our Maxi Tracks rear drawers. These fit in a Brumby without any modification. They're only about 300 bucks on special. You do have to pull the stoppers out of the drawers though because they don't pull that far enough, which is quite annoying. But they got full drawers with a fridge slide, which I can't move because it's strapped down. And then we just run two of those 30s on top. And um, that's enough to get pretty much two extra tanks. The Brumby's only got like a 40, 45 litre fuel tank. So one of them pretty much fills it and we get like 450 k's or tank so you can get nearly 1000 k's just with two of those jerry cans. We've got our heated chair. These I thought would be a great investment. I bought them to sell them. I've got like six of them left. Um, they're a heated chair that runs a Milwaukee battery and the amount I'd have to sell them for would be like 150 bucks and no one's gonna pay that for some shit Chinese chair that breaks every time you pack it up. We've got our Milwaukee chainsaw. That's about it in the back. So underneath the car, we've still got the original R160 diff. That's now got a Forrester diff lock in it. Um, just one of those auto torque lockers. We've also got upgraded rear torsion bars. We've got new rear struts. I do have bar pin eliminators that we haven't chucked in yet, so I can run a longer rear strut. But then that causes an issue of we'll have to run limiting straps because we'll get too much travel in the rear and it will break CVs. It actually gets a lot of travel in the rear compared to the front now anyway. We've had to replace this side lifting block as it snapped the, the bolt flush off with the chassis. And we've got a new exhaust. I've built an exhaust for it. Um, so now it doesn't sound like a fart in a Milo tin. It just sounds like a deeper fart in a Milo tin. 
So all of our knobs fell off when we got back from Birdsville. They're all broken now and gone. And then this is the, pretty much the interior of it. We've got our SAS steering wheel and boss kit. Um, we've got a 150 watt inverter that just charges our phones and shits so when we go away. Our first aid kit's just jammed in here because the box <laughs> fell apart. <laughs> oh, we do have original log books and service guides. Whew. One owner car. <laughs> um, we've got this 3D printed cup holder that I was very disappointed about. These are like 35, 40 bucks. And he couldn't even give it a sand to get rid of like the shit off it. So I was quite annoyed with that. We've got our authentic camel fur stubby holder from Mari. Our 40 channel UHF that just sits behind the seat. Um, what else features we got? Oh, we've got four wheel drive, but low range just falls out, so it doesn't work. Build the a interior full... light? Oh, the interior light, that's non-existent anymore. It was useless anyway. So we're gonna make a full roof console for this, like front and back, just to put more shit up there. Um, donate to us if you want that done sooner this whole car has also been sound deadened we were going to put carpet in this at one stage but i just didn't like how the carpet fit but it is all sound deadened it is pretty quiet in here minus the fuel pump noise which i don't know if you can hear that it's quite <laughs> nice in your head after about seven hours what about the seat covers oh these seat covers were from super cheap auto they're actually not bad these seat covers are quite nice they fit all right in these seats but mine somehow, every time I'd sit on it, it would like move across. That's like a fitted bed sheet, you know, when they crawl up the back and they just, you end up touching the bare mattress. Well, it did it for one last time and then I got the shit on and I tore it off. So that's why my seat doesn't have a seat cover and that one still does. <laughs> so we replaced our front coils and struts on this twice because we bent one when we got back from Birdsville. We've also done the wheel bearings in the front of this twice now. Um, we did it once and then I happened to do a CV shaft and I couldn't get the shaft in far enough. So I had to just keep driving down the road and keep tightening the nut as we went. Um, and then I was worried that the bill bearings were going to collapse. So I, when, the second we got home, I just replaced them. So next year, we should have a lot going on with this wide body um, exoskeleton. Also, we have a winch bar so we can have a removal winch on the front and rear of this. If you want to help us out, go on our link tree and you can donate to our PayPal. Any donation will help us get videos out sooner and hopefully get this done next year. So it's completely finished and that's how I want it to be. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and leave a comment and see what you reckon.